Hey everybody, we have a full gameplay here, and I don't not entirely sure who I'm gonna play. Uh I actually forgot to ban one god. Uh I skipped it. <laughs> uh let, I think I'm gonna play some Isis actually. Isis. Oh, this Isis is one of my She's become one of my favorite dual gods, and with the changes to Isis, she she's yeah, she's she's just one of my favorites. And I have the diamond border on Isis as well. Uh my favorite part about her is that she doesn't seem to have that many bad matchups. She has two two abilities that are CC, you know, stun and silence, and of course you're all. It's just amazing. Like the smell of a fresh and usually that helps her in most matchups. And then also her three is protection reduction, you know, she has shield. Her ultimate can pretty much counter, you know, she can use it to mitigate most alts and then just do huge amounts of damage back. So yeah, so my my favorite start is Bancroft's into you know into a normal mage build plus power. I'm also gonna go racer I think. Third duel. Cool. Well, good Jeff. Um. Bad. Hold on. Oh, hold on! I gotta turn off the stupid air conditioner. We're not turning it off, but at least close my door. All right. I always have to do that, man. Okay. Yeah, so the fun there's kind of an inside joke with Isis for YouTube that you can't say her name in the title or tags because then YouTube will demonetize the video just because they don't understand that this is the god, the god of magic. This is not, this is not, not, uh, not the bad Isis. Oh. What? I should get. Okay, we're fine. Erling Shen has a lot of early damage, and I did not expect that. Okay. Uh, he has Bracer too. So. I stunned him out of his three. Possibly. We should be. Tries to do that. Or won't, though. I'd like to get my three. Possibly. There. Be ready though. I'm ready for you. Ready. Now his protections are reduced. Go for it. Lots of damage, yeah. Yeah, Isis and Jean Kui I really like because they just don't have that many bad matchups. So usually, no matter who you're against, you have a good chance of winning, you know? Like, you're not going to win every match. And they're not OP, you know? Or I guess some people have been saying Isis. But like, they're just pretty good average. Oh, nice. But they're not like top, top tier. So, yeah. So if you want to play some safe gods in duel, I would say Isis and John Quay. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, one thing I've talked about is that um, the borders... I always feel like for some gods, I feel like I can probably get number one. But the thing is, I play such a variety of gods, I don't have enough time to only play one god. So I end up always being behind in the leaderboards. Like this split, I'm not even trying for the Ymir leaderboard because I'm, I'm already pretty far behind. But also there's like so many people only playing Ymir. And even though I play a ton of Smite, I can't keep up with them when I'm playing all these other gods too. So kind of sucks. Okay, so if he ults us, I drop my ult on the ground, he should be good. Didn't ult us there. Now I need to click the wave. I'm actually going to put more points on my one. Actually, my two might not be the right answer here. Full bank cross, we can fight very well. Bank cross is such a huge power spike, as you all know. Watch that. Gotta drop our ult on the ground. Nice. Yeah, so like take take Erling Shen, right? Um, for example, if he goes into ult and I drop my ult on the ground, you actually saw that I dropped my ult. He was ulting and he actually changed his camera direction to get out of my ult as soon as possible. So it, it made his ult like completely useless because he wasn't able to get the taunt off. I mean, he would have still got the heal if he was able to live, but still. It's like he does not want to stay in my ult and charge it because it'll do so much more damage. Ice assault charges based on how much damage is dealt in it. 
that's pretty good. I don't know how the new staff does on Isis. I imagine it's not amazing. Probably pretty. I do like tower diving, but at the same time, it's a little scary. Neither of us have ult. Okay, so I know you don't have that many tricks up here. There we go. He was stunned, so he can use Bracer. Yeah, so uh, matchmaking in duels are really bad. Yeah, like this guy's I did this is his third duel ever. Like I, I it's like I, I don't really know what to say. Curling Shen is good, but you know, duels an entire uh, different game mode. It, it takes a while to learn. Now, here's the thing also, I'm also on plat one right now for those that don't know, and I've been losing like crazy, so maybe matchmaking is not that bad. Plat one actually Oh, no, no, I got promoted to Diamond 5. Never mind. I have a plat. It's like a high elo, but when you take into into consideration how many players play duel, it's not that high. Alright. Yeah, I, I got back to Diamond. I forgot that yesterday. Oh shoot, he did a lot of damage to his assault. I need a bracer. Okay. Have him charge our ult a little bit. Oh, that's so good. I should have used my potion a lot earlier. Okay. Okay. And it looks good to me! Yes! Oh, that's so good. Max range ice of spirit. Spirit balls are always so nice. Nice. Alright, let's go. I have no mana. We need to go. We need to leave. It was time for him to leave. Let's get cooldown into a breastplate. Sure, breastplate. If you guys may notice, I do have a similar build for a lot of oh, for a lot of magical gods, and that is usually bank. It's some sort of Bankrofts cooldown boots defense, but. You'll also notice that in situations, I'll build different things depending on what I need, right? So on Isis, I don't need a blessing as much as the damage early game. So I just rush Bankrofts. On, let's say, Fafnir, I need mana and cooldown desperately. So I get Specialist Blessing, right? But the core items are usually somewhat the same because those are the best items. Like Bankrofts or Breastplate of Valor if I need the cooldown. Um, but then you'll also, if I... In a very specific matchup, like let's say I'm fighting someone who rushes double life steal and they have healing, then I'll probably get Contagion instead of Breastplate Valor. I think one of the biggest things that hurts uh, new players and also old players in Smite is when they stick to a cookie cutter build. And when a cookie cutter build is basically a build they got online or from somebody and they build that every single game no matter what. That's like really bad. Huge part of duel is counter building, and if you can't do that, you're, just, you're only hurting yourself. Like, can you get away with cookie cutter builds on the OP gods? Yes, you can. You can actually get very far. Like, it's like you get to even like masters with cookie cutter builds on the, on the OP gods. But when you're you find yourself in a situation, like, let's say against a guardian who you've never fought, and they go either a lot of defense or they go one shot, you're not gonna know what to do because you haven't experienced um, counter building much. And that's how I used to get a lot of my wins on Guardians, actually, is I would be fighting good players, and they, they knew what they were doing in terms of the god aspect, but they would not build right, and I could usually take advantage of that. Okay. Committing to this? Looks like he's committing to this. Not committing to that. Like, we will get anti-heal this game for his his ult. Uh, one thing I like is Cursed Ankh against Erling Shen. I'm not sure if that's what I'll build. Not 100%. Like, I could go I could go a lot of things right now. But Curse Donk is what I'm considering the most. Depends on what his second relic is as well. But I don't... I don't need to wait for his second relic. But I should in case he gets a Rific emblem. Rific could kind of mess me up. I have no slow immunity. And, you know, I don't have sprint. A lot of people think Isis is immune to slows in her one, and she is not. But since she gets movement speed, slows aren't as effective against her. 
but still. Yeah, breastplate Valor on Mars. Yeah, you know what? No, 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 no. We should wait. We should wait. We have the lead. We don't need a Chris Donk to kill him right now. Uh, let's go Divine Rune, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have any defense right now, and the flat pen from Divine Rune gives us a lot of damage, as well as the passive for when he ults, and also his bracer, you know? Okay. I don't have wards. I can't safely take a bull demon. But we can farm up. Alright. Also, Isis passive, you're almost never going to get in duel. Like, getting 10 kills in duel is pretty rare. I think when you die, it counts as a it counts as a stack as well, though. So, if you, let's say, so if you get five kills and you die five times, then you will get Isis passive. So, you can kind of build around that. Because Isis gets cooldown from her ult, so you want to make sure that you're, or from her passive, I'm sorry. You want to make sure that you're not overkept to cooldown. Yeah, so it's two HP 5 per stack, two MP 5 per stack, and when it evolves, it gives 10% cooldown reduction. Yeah. That makes sense. That should draw some blood. Right now we might go for Golden. Go for red buff first though. But he does not get Gang his defense, okay. Yeah, Isis 3 is a 30% magical protection reduction. So order of penetration, again, I, I like to mention this a lot because it's very important. Is percent reduction, flat pen. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Percent reduction, flat reduction, percent pen, and then just pen. So, examples are percent reduction would be demonic grip, flat reduction, spear of the mages, percent pen, obsidian shard, and regular pen is just that. So, if I have obsidian shard and I use my three, I'm lowering his protections, and then obsidian shard gets applied after that, and obsidian gives me nearly no pen. Just because the way it's item works is it scales lower the less protections they have so i'm not a huge fan of obsidian on isis um however you are going to be damaging them most of the time outside of your three but my with my play style the thing is that i always almost always use my three into my my abilities because i want to use the, the, pr the protection reduction right so if I'm if that's my playstyle, then it doesn't really make sense to go obsidian unless they have like triple defense. So even without triple defense, I don't or let's say they have double defense, I don't think I would go obsidian. Oh I miss. If I miss though, that's where it's like, okay, now I don't have obsidian fighting into it. So now it hurts. Or I don't have that much pen. But Spear of the Mages is also a great item. On Isis, you can apply it, keep it applied pretty easy, especially if you have high cooldowns or low cooldowns. I, I should say. Okay. He, oh no, he didn't back. He was just, he was just waiting by that, that corner. Now the protection reduction does not last very long for for my three. I believe it's only like a couple seconds. Um. 2.5 seconds max rank. Yeah, so that's usually enough time to use your two and a little bit of your one. But you know, your two is your highest damaging ability. Uh, just burst damage. And your one, you know, you get the first part of it. But pretty good. Okay, so let's start building into a spirit mage actually. Okay, and he did not go horrific, so I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna upgrade Crystal right away. I, I do believe when you have the money and you're going against someone with a heal, if you do decide to go Curse Donkey, you should upgrade it as soon as possible. It's kind of like Sunder, where it's it's almost... It's, you can use it without upgrading it, but its best use is the upgraded version of it, you know? Like, preventing 50% anti-heal is very nice, but that's not the main reason that Curse Donk is viable. I'd say the upgrade part of Curse Donk is what makes it viable. Especially on gods that can't stop the heal. So, for example, Erling Shen, he ults. I pop Chris Donk, he can't stop the heal from happening. So he's going to get the increased damage no matter what. Now there's certain gods that can stop the heal from happening, or the kill's instant. 
and those gods curse donk is good against but you know you'd have to use it preemptively and they can just decide to not heal but you know then you can win the fight but still don't get the extra damage Bumana is a great great god to build curse donk against well, he negates his ult, makes him take more damage of his ult. You'll actually start winning the boxing matches with that. It looks like he's building into an Executioner, not surprised. This real quick. Since we're just, we're not really doing anything at Phoenix, what I should be doing is taking all these buffs. That gives us more XP and gold. Very good. And I will say, this guy's playing good for this being third duel. Like, I, like, duel, I play way, hey, 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 too much. Uh, I, th I think I, I'm almost embarrassed to say how many games I have in duel, but check on my profile. So, you know. Matchmaking do be like that. I've only been masters in one split, though. Too sad. Same time, I don't, I, I try not to care too much about rank. It's mainly about, uh. Mainly about how I get to the high ranks, in my opinion. Like, if I'm going scummy stuff, then not as satisfying, you know? Like, when I got to Masters, I was playing- I was playing some OP gods, like, on her and stuff. But, like, that wasn't the main- the main gods I was playing, you know? That cheeky little <laughs> stop my back and hop. <laughs> Alright, let's get this. What is he- It's so strange to me that Shell, a team item, right, is not as good in Conquest as it is in Duel. I always find that strange. A lot of relics that are mainly meant for team-based stuff, not as good in... Not as good in... Good in Duel. I guess it's because there's five people hitting you, so that small shield is just not worth it compared to other stuff. So even though you give five people a small shield, it is, at the end of the day, it's a small shield against five people. Whereas that small shield helps a lot more against one person. And you know, the upgraded part of a sh shell, the mitigated autos, helps a lot. Not against Isis, but you know, against other gods. If I do go poly, shell's great. Shell's great against poly because it absorbs the poly shot. Okay. Okay, pop the curse off. Oh my god, my ult did so much. Oh my god, my ult did so much. 993, yeah, that's what... Wait, is that... That's not the right ability. 823. 823 was my ult. Curse donk is crazy, man. Yeah, I wanted to bait him and keep him inside my ult as long as possible. And then I really wanted him to get hit by my ult with the increased damage from curse donk. So that went right according to plan. I really like the decision I made to play some other gods in between the Guardian Gauntlet, because it's very gauntlet's fun. It's also nice to be able to play some mid-tiers compared to low-tiers. Okay. He could end here, but I think I'll give him one more fight. Oh, shoot. Run away! Run away! We'll need to be. It's just a scratch. Okay, let's use Fire Minions to our advantage. Nice, okay. Let's go. Very nice. Yeah, but I just I like being able to show variety. Variety's variety's good. That was the entire point of the Guardian Gauntlet was variety. Now we got stuck on Terra. Nice. Oh. Oh, he paused before the Titan would die. Why would you do that? Okay, well, anyways. Oh, never mind. Okay, I was I was gonna do a little outro and just skip to the end after that, but never mind. Okay. Well, thank you all for watching. Uh, let me know what gods you would like to see me play. Right now, uh, I'm gonna start off with playing some of my favorites uh, in between the Guardian Gauntlet, and then we will play just whatever, you know. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed and look forward to some Dead by Daylight content. Um, I'm working on some more videos. See you guys.
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was, I try to show the end stats after every video. So, like, even if it's quick, so you guys can pause. All right, have a good day.